Hello, Plant Tribe, and welcome back to episode number two of my new series, Succulents 101. Really shouldn't even call it Succulents 101 ongoing because we will get out of 101 into more advanced, not so 101 content. <laughs> um, but these first few episodes will most definitely be for beginner succulent parents or parents to be. So, Last week we talked about the real basics. So what is a succulent? Um, what kind of water do they require? Um, basic lighting and that kind of thing. So today we are going to discuss how to pick a succulent, what kind of container to use for your succulents, and we will dive into what kind of soil you want. We're kind of gonna, kind of going to lie the foundation down for buying succulents for the first time and everything that you need to know before doing that. Then after we cover all of that stuff, in a few weeks we will start into some really fun things like I said in the last episode. So we'll talk about uh, and to show you how to arrange them, different things that you can make from them. If you want to see the video in which I explain all the really cool things that you can make with succulents, um, I will link the video right up here. So that is the first episode. So if you're seeing this and uh, you're a new succulent parent, uh, go ahead and check that video out first. This is the second video in this series. And um, yeah, I mean, you can watch them however you choose. But if you want to watch them when I'm referencing back to the, what I did before, it may not make sense. You know what I'm saying. Okay. So that's what we're going to dive into today. So if that sounds like something you'd like to stick around and watch, then by all means, stick around and watch and uh, let's get into it. You stayed! That's awesome! So, what I totally forgot to do that happens a lot is introduce myself. If you are new here, welcome! I am so glad you found me. My name is Nikki and this is my channel, Plants, Pots, and Whatnots. If you're returning like the gluttons for punishment that I know you are, it is so nice to see you. Welcome back. So. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is choosing a succulent. How do you pick one? What what should you look for? And the things that you need to know surrounding that portion of succulents. I don't know where I was going with that. So the first thing is where do you buy succulents? How do I get my hands on these little suckers? So they might be something that in your local nursery you've just lo looked over or overlooked because you know they weren't really something interesting you didn't really understand what they were you could have thought they were plastic because to be honest they kind of look a little fake this isn't fake it's an actual beautiful succulent um anyways but you can get them in most local nurseries um there are quite a few nurseries around here and all of the ones that I have been to all sell succulents of varying degrees, whether it's, you know, from your simple, more uh, common things uh, like cacti and uh, horthia or some of the more green varieties, all the way up to, you know, these beautiful colored ones that you will see. Gorgeous. So. Um, they also sell succulents online pretty much like uh, I, can't, I can't really speak for anywhere other than North America but I know that in Canada and the US there are tons of companies that sell and ship succulents online um, if you guys would like to see a video where I tell you about different places that you can buy succulents from, by all means let me know. I can do some digging and put that together for you. Um, I think that would be kind of fun, give everybody an idea of where to buy from. Um, I do have my favorites. <laughs> so the only real downfall from as far as purchasing online goes is you can't pick your particular plant. Now the good thing about buying them online and and buying from a reputable company is that you have to rely on them to pick succulents that are in good condition. And if the company is reputable, the chances are they're not going to sell you a succulent that's like half dying. Hopefully it doesn't have pests. So you just kind of have to put your faith in the company that you're going to sell you something or send you something decent. So. So the other place that I have found succulents is on secondhand websites or apps. Um, so down in the States, I know you guys have Craigslist. I'm not sure what other apps you have up here. 
um, up there down there um, and I'm really not sure about uh, other countries and that kind of thing but in Canada we have places like Kijiji and Virage Sale and um, what else do we have those are the ones that I really use um, but if you go into like their section on um, usually you can find them in like indoor or outdoor gardening or um, indoor decor I find a lot of them and some people will buy succulents and then not be great with them or decide they don't like them and they'll put them on there either for free or for a charge or whatever so that's also a good place to to go and look and then you know you're kind of saving a succulent that may end up in the garbage or in the compost or wherever so make sure you check out those places too they're great places to find everything um, I will eventually be doing a video that I will be sharing with you all of the things that I have found um, secondhand and you would be <laughs> surprised at the majority of plant related products that I have found on there that I have spent a tenth of the price on that I normally would had I bought it in store and by doing that, you're also giving that product a second lease on life. It's not going to landfills, and uh, it's just a really great way to do things. It's, um, I don't know, I just, I swear by it, but you know, you do you, you do you. Okay, so, you walk into the nursery, you're gonna actually buy a succulent. You wanna pick it out yourself, what do you look for? What, what warning signs are something that you should keep out for? So the first thing that you want to check is the leaves, okay? Make sure that the leaves aren't mushy. That means it's been overwatered. And as we've discussed in the past or the previous episode, there's not really any coming back from that. <laughs> once it turns to mush, um, because again, succulents hold all the water in their leaves. Once it turns to mush, you can't suck the water out of the leaves, you know what I'm saying? So just pass over that one. Um, you also want to avoid ones that have really crispy leaves or shriveled leaves. Um, you want to try to buy the, the healthiest succulent that you can. Now that's not to say that a nursery might not sell you uh, a succulent that's not at its peak for a little bit cheaper. You can always ask. Don't feel free or don't be afraid to ever ask um, because you know what? You never know. If you don't ask, you don't know. So. Um, but if you're definitely just first starting out, I would really just recommend buying the healthiest succulent possible. You want to set yourself up for the best experience, best first impression, <laughs> because we know first impressions, they last. Okay. So the second thing that you want to look for is the structure of the plant. So if it's supposed to be a nice, tight, compact, floret, rosette shaped succulent um, like these echeverias they are meant to be short and rosette shaped okay so what you want to avoid is things like this this is a stretched out succulent this is a succulent um i think this is a uh pearl von nurnberg if i'm not mistaken um that i purposely left in less than ideal light and it has stretched out and you can tell that it's been reaching <laughs> trying to find the light it's still beautiful it's still fixable and we will get into that in uh, I think next week's episode actually we're gonna touch on propagation and fixing succulents so um, keep your eye out for that but anyway so you want to avoid ones like this this is not what this plant is supposed to look like I mean if that's the look you like cool go for it but know that there are succulents that are um, trailers like this naturally <laughs> this is not naturally what this plant looks like okay um so watch out for the structure if you have an idea of the different types of succulents and um probably closer to the end of the the first 101 part of this series i will run you through a whole bunch of different succulents what they look like their growth structure and that kind of thing there's so many more like it's it's I'll, I'll try to make that video not <laughs> crazy crazy long because there are so many of them um, I'll probably just combine it and put it with something else but there are some beautiful succulents and ones that I definitely want to introduce you to so um, yeah if you're buying echeverias make sure they're nice tight compact rosettes like they're supposed to be um, this one in particular so this is a bit larger of a one now there's a couple 
things wrong with this plant. I shouldn't say wrong. It's not horrible. It's fairly compact, but as you can see, it started to lean this way a little bit uh, because the light source was on this side at the nursery. So the other thing about this plant, and this isn't necessarily a deal breaker. I'm just trying to make some space here. Um, you've got these crispy leaves on the bottom. Now, that's not awful. It happens naturally. Uh, the leaves will crisp and you just reach in there and you pull them out. Um, what you want to make sure is the rest of the leaves, like this portion in here, looks nice and proper. Uh, so don't pay too, too much attention to that. The other thing is you want to squish the leaves. This plant probably could use some water. These leaves are supposed to be a little more stiff than they are right now. Um, so that's that. So whole structure is something to look out for. The other thing is um, check out the leaves for scarring or damage. Now this one in particular, I know personally that the nursery that I bought this particular succulent from, um, a lot of the time they leave them outside and they do also water from overhead. Now, leaving them outside isn't so bad because the rainwater is pretty natural. There's no chemicals in it. And as we talked about before, you have to watch for crown rot. So if you're watering indoors overhead, okay, just don't do that. Um, well, cause what will happen is the water will sit in here and the plant will rot literally from the inside out. Um, and obviously we don't want that. Um, anywho, you can see on these leaves here, on these bottom leaves, these little spots. So what that's from is from overhead watering with tap water. So those are chemicals. That's probably chlorine, salt, God knows what. Um, and that is, see, here's the problem. So what I just did, I'll show you what I just did actually. Okay, so I took this leaf and I went, oh, we can just wipe that off. It doesn't come off as easily as you would think. And also because of the type of Echeveria this is, it has that powdery coating, which we discussed in the last episode that protects the plant from the sun a little bit. Um, and it doesn't come back once you wipe that off. So there's no way to get these water spots off. It's not like on a plant, like a, a tropical that you would have in your home that maybe got some water spots on it that you can use you know some lemon or whatever to wipe off it's not going to work that way with succulents because then you're just going to have a plant with no pretty coating and it's pretty much the draw of <laughs> what makes the plant so beautiful so if that spotted hard water stained look isn't the look you're going for then watch for that as well something else that you want to consider when you're purchasing your succulent is again last episode we talked about lighting so if you know that you don't have a high light situation and you're not able or you and you don't have a grow light um, to keep the succulents under then you need to consider a, a lower light option or potentially a succulent that has that grows um, as more of a trailing plant um, I didn't grab one let me go grab one and I'll show you what I mean okay so I brought <laughs> I just snapped a couple leaves off but that's okay because we'll propagate those later um, so this particular succulent, and I can't, I, I'm not sure of the name of this one um, in particular, but this one grows like this. It kind of grows branchy and here and there. It is also green. So this is a particular succulent that is going to be better suited for, um, it will take higher light, not direct light, uh, but it will take, um, like a medium light situation. So if you're somebody who has a lower light situation in their home, this is maybe one that you could go for because it's not going to, uh, it's not going to stretch or show signs as much as say an Echeveria that's supposed to be nice and tight and compact will. Um, so that's a good option. Um, this is another one. <laughs> I know it looks a little wonky. Um, but this particular succulent grows a little bit longer, a little bit lankier, and it, it's a really nice option for growing down over the side of pots if you want like a chunkier trailing plant over the side of an arrangement. Um, and these ones do grow a lot of little offshoots. You can see this little, these two little babies growing off the side here. Um, but yeah, so that is another option if you're not uh, able to put it in a higher light scenario. Another fun thing to look for when you're purchasing a succulent for the time is extra plants. 
bonus plants. So this one in particular, I'm not sure if you can even see it because of the stuff that is in there. But if you look right in the side there, yeah, you can see that. There's a baby plant growing in there or, or a pup, um, as I believe they're called in the succulent world. Um, so that's cool. If you can get yourself extra plants for free, do it. Check for ones with, uh, or even sometimes you'll find um, at nurseries and that kind of thing, the, the, the leaves will fall off or leaves from other succulents will fall down. Is that a mealy? No. Woo, it was perlite. Okay. <laughs> um, leaves from that plant or another plant will fall down on the top of the soil and they'll just root. They are, most succulents are not picky about where they propagate. Um, or the care that they receive. They just fall. I mean, that's naturally what they do in, in nature is the leaves drop off, they root, they grow where they fall, and, you know, that's the cycle of things. So that's a cool thing to watch out for. Get extra plants. It's like a two for one. It's like a BOGO succulent deal. <laughs> what? Okay. The last thing that I want to mention that I definitely think is worth mentioning is look out for pests. Oh, my goodness, I can't stress this enough. Now, the number one pest that you're going to encounter as a succulent parent is the dreaded mealybug. Hideous little creatures, aren't they? So, these guys are so nasty. And the reason they're so nasty is they get in crooks and crevices and places that you would never see, which is really hard. So. If you really want to avoid bringing that kind of thing into your home, anytime you go plant shopping, whether it be for a succulent or a tropical or whatever, it's really handy to keep a little magnifying glass in your purse or your pocket or your car or whatever, um, just to really get in there and check to make sure that there's no pests. Because once you bring that home, you set it on your shelf next to all of your other beautiful babies, next thing you know, you have a full blown mealybug infestation and I can tell you from personal experience that they're difficult to get rid of <laughs> um, and we will go into a full pest situation and how to deal with pests in a later video um, but that is definitely something that you want to look out for I have a succulent here that I have been treating for mealybugs for quite some time and I don't know if you can see it right underneath here I don't know if it's gonna focus maybe maybe not anyway I just found another mealybug right underneath there so he's sitting over here away from the rest of the plants because these guys are sneaky so sneaky so that is something definitely to check don't just assume that because it's at a reputable nursery, because sometimes they don't see them either. I mean, that's a lot of plants for a nursery to go through and check one by one. Now, if it has a massive, massive infestation, you may want to consider switching nurseries altogether. Um, but anyways, I digress. That's something to look out for. The last thing that you want to consider when purchasing your succulents is what kind of container that you're going to put it in. Um, so if you're going to just have it in a single container, maybe you want to think about color. Does the color of the container that you have at home really kind of go with, if that's something you even care about. Um, you also want to consider if you're making like an arrangement, say, what succulents go together? What kind of look do you want? Do you want like more monochrome? So all of the same sort of colors. Do you want contrasting colors? You want some height? You want some shortness? You want some trailing? So consider those things when you go to, to pick out your succulents is what container you're putting in or what the purpose is that you're using the succulent for. So on the topic of containers, let's run through the different types of containers that you can use for your succulents. Um, I mean, there's so many that this could be an entire like two hour video, um, but I'm, this is, I'm just gonna run you through the basics. Um, so first we'll start with the types of materials that you can purchase actual containers <laughs> or actual uh, planters in. So you have your ceramic. So that is like a glazed uh, product. They are a little bit more breathable, not quite as breathable as a terracotta, 
but more breathable than say like a plastic or a metal. Um, so as we found in the last episode, succulents um, are extremely drought tolerant and the reason that they are, and the reason they're called succulents is because they retain a lot of water in their leaves and their stems. So if a succulent has too much water, it's going to get root rot, it's going to get stem rot, it is going to turn into a pile of icky mush. So the best option is for you to have a, a breathable pot, in my personal opinion. Um, especially in the beginning when you're getting the hang of watering them or not watering them. Um, so that is definitely something that you want to look at. So I have, this one is in terracotta. Most of my plants in my home, regardless of whether they're succulents or tropicals, as you can see behind me here, the majority of my plants are in terracotta. I like terracotta. I like the look of it. Um, I like the fact that um, it wicks water and moisture away from the soil. So your soil tends to dry out more quickly. And if you're an over carer, <laughs> an over waterer, um, it, it gives you that little extra buffer to kind of save the roots of your plant um, from root rot and overwatering and that kind of thing because your soil will dry out faster. So then you have things like plastics and metals. Now, where these are tend to be uh, great options because they are much more durable. They don't break like a terracotta or a ceramic um, would. I mean, if you're careful with them, they'll be fine anyways. But um, it depends. If you're klutz like me, I just have to be like really careful with my pots because I am like the biggest klutz in the world. Um, so the other fun thing about the plastics and the metals is they come in such a wide variety of fun colors and shapes and that kind of thing where if you purchase terracotta there's not a whole lot of like options as far as they go you have shorter ones you have taller ones you have you know wider ones and that's pretty much all you got you might find ones with like decorations on them but or alternatively you can buy terracotta and paint it but then you kind of still run that risk because you do, you should probably seal it, which will kind of take away some of the breathability of the actual material. Okay, so the last thing that I can think of, and I'm like I said, you can put succulents in pretty much anything, any type of container that will hold things. Um, so, but the last option as far as materials is glass. So I don't have any options, but, or, any handy here but I will insert some footage uh, some photos of um, some glass options that you could use um, and again you run the, the risk of it breaking <laughs> uh, but there are some beautiful beautiful options as far as glass concerned now I will say with the plastic the metal and the glass options if you are the type to overwater, I would probably at least in the beginning until you get a really good grasp on how succulents work how often you should water and so on. I would probably tend to lean towards the terracotta simply for the fact that it's less risky. <laughs> um, if you're going to lean towards the other ones like the glass, the metal, the plastic, make sure that you're, I mean, you want to use a well draining mix anyways, but it becomes even more important at that point because the material of the pot will naturally not wick away as much moisture from the roots of the plant. Aside from the type of material and the color and the um, shape of the container that you're picking, you really need to consider the drainage hole situation. If you are first starting out as a succulent parent, I implore you, please get a container with a drainage hole or two or four or 10. It's going to save you. Nope it's going to save your succulent. <laughs> um, so all of the bottom of mine, these plastic nursery pots um, obviously have lots of holes, so those are great options. Um, most terracotta, without tipping it too much, come with a drainage hole. Um, now, it's when you start to get into the more unique household type items that you're gonna be using, it, like teacups or shoes, or maybe antiques that you don't want to be drilling holes into, um, that's when you really need to 
be very specific with your watering and very sparing with your watering. That's when these are going to come in even more handy because you can just water a little bit right to the root of the plant. Um, yeah. So, but I, I definitely encourage you, if you're just starting out, just do yourself a favor until you get really used to them. Get a pot with a drainage hole. That way you can just water the plant all the way through and not worry about it. But it's definitely an option. Um, eventually, sometime down the road, I will be doing a video on how to <clears throat> drill holes into different materials. Um, if you decide to you know, you, like how often do you find the cutest pot but it doesn't have a drainage hole? So you're like, oh, I can't buy that, it doesn't have a drainage hole. You can drill holes in it. Um, it's just a matter of what type of bit to use and the method in which you have to drill that hole. So there is something to consider also. So one of the other cool things about succulents and planting succulents is that you can use kind of any container you want. Anything that will hold something, you can put a succulent in, which is so fun. The reason that you can do that is because succulents don't have a substantial, for the most part, succulents don't have a substantial root system. If you think about where they grow, um, rain comes a few and far between. So the roots tend to stay closer to the top of the soil. Um, so in locations where they don't get a whole lot of rain, the rain doesn't get, you know, flooded down to the point where it gets all the way through that really um, dense, you know, say desert soil or things like that. So the roots tend to stay a little closer to the top of the soil. <laughs> I said soil way too many times. You know what I mean? Okay. So that gives us options on planting in pretty much anything. Um, like the ones behind me, these are all tropical plants and they need a lot of room for their roots to, to grow and to branch out. Um, again, more succulents don't. So you can use all kinds of really cool things like teacups, like shoes. Um, I'm going to kind of flip through a bunch of pictures here, but I have seen so many really, really cool containers and I do have here a whole bunch of different containers that I, when we start to dive into the how to plant containers and what to plant them in and that kind of thing, I will show you some different things that I have here and some really fun things. Um, but get, get imaginative with it. I mean, <clears throat> there's so many cool options for containers and so many beautiful options for succulents that you can, I mean, it, really your imagination is the only thing that's going to hold you back by from creating some beautiful succulent wonder. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, so the next thing that we want to be concerned with or not concerned with is top dressing. So when you're going out to buy succulent, let's just get it all out of the way. Let's get everything out of the way that you may want to use or buy or whatever to make the perfect cute little succulent planter or single pot or whatever. And that is top dressing. Now you can choose to top dress. You can choose not to top dress. That's completely up to you. Um, but there's a lot of different options. So you can use something like this. So this is just little white rock. I think I found this rock. I mean, it's starting to discolor. So keep that in mind as well. Um, this white will discolor over time. Now I bought it at like the Dollar Tree. So it's not like it was expensive and I could just replace it if I wanted to, but this guy's gonna get chopped in our propagation video anyway. So I'm not overly worried about it. Um, you can use things like lava rock, pumice, uh, you could use perlite if you really wanted to, um, river rock, you can use bark, you can use this, it's like, um, I don't, I don't know what it is, I don't know what it is, but it's really cute, what do you think? I think it's kind of cute. Anyways, or you can choose, or you can use sand, colored sand, regular sand. Really, it's just, again, up to your imagination what you want to use because there's so many different options. But I do encourage you to try to use things that, um, you know, you may have around the home or, you know, go cheap. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money. Go to the dollar store. Or you can keep, again, your eye on secondhand websites and apps and things like that and maybe find some really cool options that way. I have also done that really cool and here's a just little 
tip for you. Um, I see a lot of times people getting rid of uh, aquarium gravel or aquarium sand on secondhand uh, apps and that. That is a great option for not only top dressing, but mixing into your soil. Your soil mixture, and we're gonna get into that very shortly here, uh, your soil mixture should have some sand in it um, because it makes it a little bit more drain through and gritty, which is something that your succulents like and that you know they were natively grown in. Um, <clears throat> and it's a really cheap option. A lot of people just want to get rid of it. So keep your eye on secondhand uh, apps for stuff like that because it is great and you can use it not just for your succulents but your tropicals and you know your cacti and all kinds of different things it has like a ton of different uses so watch for that okay the last thing that i want to get into that you may want to consider buying when you're starting your whole succulent adventure before we get into soil and how to mix that is tools what kind of tools do i need do you need any tools you don't need to but it helps <laughs> Okay, so there are a few things that I definitely, and especially if you're gonna get into arrangements and stuff, that I personally believe are essentials. The very first one uh, I did show you in a previous, uh, my previous video, so the first uh, episode one, uh, as far as watering goes, is this little guy. Um, this is linked down in the description of my video and I will link um, some of the other things down there as well if you want to check those out. Um, but this one I really like. I do have the two options. I have this one, which is just, you know, a syringe. Uh, but I find that for succulents, especially when you're considering arrangements, this just isn't long enough to get in there into the root ball of the plant. So when you're watering succulents, and I did stay in the last one, but I'm just gonna reiterate, you do wanna get right down in there underneath and I find this one is perfect. It's kind of curved, uh, it is quite long, so you have better you know, ability to kind of direct the water and where you want that water to go. So this, for me, I use this for literally everything. Succulents, I use it to water my moss poles, I use it to refill my propagation stations. This is like one of the best products that I have bought, and I think it cost me like two bucks, and you can probably get it cheaper than that. Um, Anyway, get get one of these, regardless. <laughs> Highly recommend. Okay, so the second thing is more like it when you're creating arrangements or if you're using um, like sand. Just to if you if you if you want your succulent to look its best, you don't want it covered in soil or sand or whatever. So get yourself. I have a couple of different ones here that I use depending on what I'm doing. Um, but you want a really soft brush. So this one is really, really soft, but it is a little bit more firm. So if you need to actually get right down in to the cracks, you can do that with one like this, just to get all the little bits off. Um, there is this one and it's very, very flexible. So when it touches the succulent, it, you're not gonna have to worry as much about getting that, um, that coating off. So here's a good example. So this one, we try not to handle succulents up here so that they retain that really pretty powdery coating. Um, but especially like when this, I, these were shipped to me in uh, the mail. So when they were trying to package these, I mean, it's unavoidable sometimes to not wipe that coating off. And if I can just show you here on the outside, See what I mean? A nice light brush, you're less likely to remove a whole lot of that dust. You can also do that. The other thing that you can buy in a lot of succulent kits is this little, <laughs> not the brightest thing I've ever done. Um, and you can just kind of use it to blow the uh, dirt or perlite or whatever is in there out. Um, now, what I will say about using this option, and it is a great option, um, just be careful when you do it because, and I've done this, um, I would just wet the top part of the soil first, even just really lightly. You don't have to actually water the plant. Um, but if you do this when it's dry, the soil is dry, as soon as you go like this, all of your top dressing or your soil or whatever is just going to go and then it's going to get all over your plant and then you're right back to the beginning. So don't do what I've done. 
<laughs> learn from my mistakes. Um, so that is another one. Um, so there are some tools that come in little packs. So I got these in a little pack. This one's really handy for uh, digging little holes just to stick the root ball. If you're working with cuttings or you're working with plugs with really short um, or no root systems, that part is really, really handy because you can just kind of stick it in the soil, wiggle it, and then just plop your succulent right in there. Uh, then of course you have your little mini shovel. Uh, you have this one. I, I'm not really entirely sure what this rigid side would be used for, um, but you can dig a little bit more pointed holes with that. Personally, I haven't used that. Um, this one I haven't used, but I think it would be kind of handy to like lift and pull out a succulent rather than trying to grab it by the um, the actual rosette or the, the, the leaves of the plant. So that's another fun one. Um, I got these in a kit somewhere. I've never used them, so I'm not um, Another really good thing that you want is a pair of tweezers. So these are really handy for, like I said, hands off with a succulent is the best option. So these are really good for getting, let me see if I can get a shot, right in there and just pulling off your dead leaves. And that way you don't have to worry about <laughs> you, just, you can just pull the leaf in half. One doesn't want to come off. Get out. I'll take that part off later. It's more for dried up leaves and that kind of thing that will come off a little bit more easily. Um, or you can just pull them off, whatever. Anyways, tweezers are really handy. Um, also, if you're creating smaller arrangements and you want to, you know, arrange things or kind of tuck things in, having something that you're easily able to control and is a little bit more keyed in is definitely a handy option. Um, also, Keep your chopsticks. This isn't a chopstick. I don't even know what this is. It might've come in one of my things, but I have used this numerous times um, just to help arrange things or situate things or poke holes or whatever. The last thing that I wanna mention and um, is kind of goes hand in hand with your pest portion. And like I said, that'll be in a later video um, is Q-tips. I'm. I mean, I, I am obsessed with Q-tips. I have them, I use them for like everything at home. Um, but these are really great for mealybugs, um, for getting mealybugs off. You dip it in a little bit of alcohol and the mealybug just <laughs> and dies, um, which is lovely. Um, you can also, it's really soft, so you can, I'm not gonna do it on this one because this one is has a coating, um, but say on one like this that does not have a coating, you know, you can just use it to to dust it off or whatever. The second last thing that I wanna mention is these little snippers. I'm sure they have an actual name. I just think they're fun to play with. Sorry. Um, so these are really handy and I'm not gonna do it, but I will show you. So if you're fixing succulents, and I will be doing a video on fixing succulents that goes hand in hand with the propagation, but these are really sharp and they're great for just snipping or reaching in. Oh. There goes top dressing. If you just want to reach in and cut, say, the top, um, if you're taking a top, cutting off a succulent, these are amazing for that. Um, they're really narrow and you can really get in there um, without touching the leaves a whole lot. So get you some. Okay, so I think, I think that's all the tools that I wanted to cover. So let's get into soil. Let's get dirty. Okay, soil, talking dirty now. So I pre-mix most of my soils. This is my cacti and succulent soil and they can be used for the same purpose. You can buy pre-mixed uh, succulent soils, but personally the ones that I have found just don't have as much drainage as I personally like. So um, I will just show you this and then I have a little over video of me mixing or a little b-roll I guess you call it of me mixing my soil um, so I'll go through that but this is what my soil looks like you can see that it's really really chunky there is perlite there is some really fine bark in there there's lots of sand and I would say about maybe 20 to 30 percent actual soil and I just use the regular potting soil um, that I normally buy for everything. I kind of amend all of my soils myself because 
I personally like it better that way and um, I can kind of gear the soil to to the actual plant and I think that's something really important um, I do have an upcoming video and I think in two weeks um, that is all of the different soils that I make and what their uses are so if that made sense <laughs> all the different soils for the different plants I have what does that even make sense okay you guys know what I'm talking about anyways so um, basically you want to start put your soil into your container um, like I said I have this one on hand all the time just because I find it easier and then I don't have to pre-mix soils every time or just like little pieces of little containers of soil every time I go to pot a plant I just have it handy I keep it on a shelf it's marked I just grab it out put it in a pot and you know I'm done with it so you want to throw a little bit of soil in there um, I, I throw lots of perlite in there <laughs> and then just your sand and you can kind of see the mix that I'm creating here and um, you know kind of what all goes into that I mean the basics of it is is that you want something that's really airy really easily drain through what <laughs> really well draining <laughs> um, and something that's gonna breathe really well and I have found I've, I've kind of tweaked my soil I've tried different things and this is the mixture that I personally have found works the absolute best for my succulents so that is my succulent mix okay <laughs> um so anyways keep your eye out for the video where i go into a little bit more depth on actual soils um what the different amendments are what they're made of how to use them and that kind of thing but for the purposes of this video that is the basics of my soil <laughs> That is pretty much all I wanted to say in this video. Keep your eye out for the next video when we will go into propagating succulents, fixing succulents, um, you know, different issues that you're going to run into with succulents and how to combat those. Um, yeah. So thank you so very much for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. It is a huge help to my channel. And I truly do appreciate it. So I would like all of you to have an excellent and wonderful day, night, week, month, and year. I love you all the bitty bits, and I will see you in the next one. Mwah! My kids ignore me until I sit down to film the video. And seriously, I got water ring. Now I want to listen to that song. Can you hear that? You're so fun. I'm such a loser. Okay. Moving on. This video just bit my tongue again. These braces need to go. Um...